Hello everyone, guess what Game of Thrones has started, but for some reason we're not talking about that. God knows why, considering it's really what I'm going to be talking about for the next two months, slash two years, slash 28 years. Um, are you going to be talking about Game of Thrones a lot, Janine? I probably am. I am very excited. We're not talking about it today, though. Damn however. it. Uh, damn it, indeed. Uh, we are uh, carrying on with our MCU edition of the uh, MCU pilot edition of Morgan Hasn't Seen, uh, the newer show on the It's a Wonderful podcast uh, feed that may or may not have its own logo soon. Who the hell knows? <laughs> Who the hell knows what's going on? Um, but yes, we only have one more after this. In this little series, this week, we are talking Iron Man 3. Uh, of course, in preparation for Avengers Endgame, there were six MCU movies that I had never seen. Uh, this being one of them, the episodes we have already done on Iron Man, The Incredible Hulk, Iron Man uh, 2, and... Thor. Thor. Thor? Yeah, just Thor. Have I mis have I miscounted? Yeah, Thor. You know why I've miscounted? Why? Because we pre-record these, yeah. and by pre-record I mean like obviously they're pre-recorded. It's a podcast that's not live. Yeah, but, uh, we're giving away all our secrets. It yeah, I suppose <laughs> I suppose I suppose uh, kind of. Um, <laughs> But it's because we're recording this before the Thor episodes come out, so I got all confused. But yes, we have done Thor. There is an episode on Thor up as well. But Janine, how are you this week? Are you all good? I'm doing okay. Actually, kind of happy about this rewatch of this film, so we'll get into yeah. it. Yeah. Why, why, why was that? Did you not like it originally? I liked it. There were lots of things to really enjoy about this movie, but I just always remember it being my least favorite. But on this rewatch, I actually, the things that bugged me didn't really bug me as much as they used to. So. I, yeah. I'm going to come up with a bold statement right out of the gates. It might be my favorite Iron Man movie. Really? Uh, solo. <laughs> solo Iron Man okay. movie. And, okay. Okay. Uh, and again, favourite and best are two different words. Still think the best narrative whole whole movie is the first one. Uh, just so happened that I personally did not care for a lot of what was going on in the first one. Character-wise and all that business. But we all know that. And if you don't know that, go and listen to the first episode of Morgan Hasn't Seen. Um, uh, but this one... Because famously... I considered Tony Stark quite a arrogant, cocky human being. Yes, yeah, Tony uh, Stank. Mm -hmm. Tony, Tony Stank, indeed. Uh, this was the Turning Point movie. Okay. Right here. Like, even in the Avengers, he's still, to a point, the smarmy guy, the I'm better than you guy, uh... But as we found, as we find out, that whole situation affected him. Yes. Yeah, so this takes place after the first Avengers. So he is suffering from some post-traumatic stress. So, yeah. yeah. And it works so well for his for the development of his character. And I grew to love Tony in this movie Yay. because he has all these problems, <laughs> and he gets over them. Okay. I do not like people that don't have any problems and get over something in their way. Give me some mental issues yeah, that they have but, to get over. Hey, you love Captain America and he has no mental issues, especially for a man who was frozen in time. He seems like he's doing pretty okay. Captain America does have mental issues. He knows nothing of the modern world. That's not mental issues. He's got a little notebook. He's keeping track. He's got the Falcon mm. telling him to listen to Marvin Gaye. And, yeah. he has, that's a very good point. He has got yeah. 
<laughs> Sam Wilson telling him to listen to Marvin Gaye's Trouble Man album, if I'm yes, not yes. mistaken. Schmodown. Uh, Schmodown. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's fair. No, Captain America, though, uh, Steve does have things to overcome, and he's not the best of the best right off the gate, is he? Look at First Avenger, he's okay, little okay. weedy enough. kid. Yeah, it's defending your, your favourite, that's okay. I am defending my favorite. <laughs> I am. I always will. But it's um, not about Captain America. It's about it certainly isn't. Iron Man. It is. It is. But I, yeah, I really like in Iron Man three that he has. He's suffering like uh, like we've seen Bruce Banner suffer in the Incredible Hulk. Not quite to the extent, of course, but he has things inside of him that he needs to get over in order to do you know succeed at the end of the movie and it's affecting his relationship with pepper so exactly. that's definitely another nice factor that they threw in there it is and again uh, the relationship between him and pepper Very is really good, good. Yeah. uh gwyneth paltrow is kind of great yes in the sort of admittedly kind of limited stuff she has she uh, makes it memorable she, and she the she chemistry does. is really good and the whole dynamic she uses it to the best of her ability in the time that she has so that's always one of my favorite parts of the iron man movies is the whole relationship with the two of them definitely and i yeah like i said again in iron man 3 that is the case uh but I just thought, I just think the character of Tony is really where I started to really enjoy him. Like I enjoy him in the current state of, of the whole okay. universe. Uh, this is very clearly to me the turning point movie where that has changed from. And you, like I said, you can go and listen to them. I, our conversations on Iron Man and Iron Man Two. I'm like, well, I don't care for Tony all that much. Yeah. So but, uh, let's go into yeah. something else that you enjoyed. That was you maybe weren't sure you were gonna enjoy the whole Mandarin twist. Yeah, because obviously everybody hates it. Every it's the main reason every like. It's the main reason a lot of people do not like Iron Man 3. They think it's... it's uh, Whether it's sort of executed badly or... Or it just felt like a wasted. waste of time or a throwaway thing. That's where yeah, I always came at it from. Was like, you have Ben Kingsley. He's so menacing. It plays into the whole Ten Rings from the first movie. What's going to happen with this? And then to see it kind of be none of that and just some guy shouting i'm the mandarin before he gets smacked in the face like and that felt like it was just done just to kind of say okay we're addressing it shut up <laughs> let's also not forget that guy pierce does turn into a dragon at some point as well <laughs> that was a little silly that was that was and pretty silly that's that's just before he turns into a full-blown fire demon yeah so where does he rank on your list of villains? I know you don't like ranking or listing things, but so far in these six movies, or even all of the ones that you've seen, was he Low. memorable? Was he better than... No, he's not memorable. Um, if anything, Ben Kingsley's way more memorable. Just because he's a weird... <laughs> So you remember Trevor Slattery? Yeah, because I, I, I kind of love it. Everybody might be saying, "Oh, they wasted Ben Kingsley. Ben Kingsley is a, a great, can be a great villainous actor when he wants to be, and of course he can. I love Ben Kingsley. You'll never hear me say a bad word against Ben Kingsley. But it's really fun to see him be silly just like that. Be silly and go from something that, of course, you're thinking is this big owning presence of a human being and and yeah admittedly i knew the twist before seeing the movie yeah um but it it really it, it honestly made me kind of laugh and when it was actually more fun and for trevor me, comes out <laughs> yeah for me though 
this was always the reason why I told people I didn't like this movie that much. And while there was a lot to love about it, this was the one thing that made me really annoyed about this movie. But watching it again, I actually kind of feel like you felt. It was actually fun and really funny. And I didn't mind the twist and I could kind of just get on board with Killian being the real Mandarin. So, yeah, it was just kind of funny that this thing was the main thing that made me say, oh, Iron Man 3 would have been so great without this. That now on a rewatch, I kind of like, no, it's actually kind of fun. So it was weird for that to kind of just happen after not seeing it in a while. I think that's my, that might be what people need to do. I think people might have seen Iron Man 3 back in, you know, 20, when, th what, th 12, 13 10, when it came out? 11? No. 10? Oh, no, it was 13. I believe it was 13. Maybe 12, 12 or 13. No, it's not 12, is it? Because 12 is the Avengers. 13. 13. Um, <clears throat> maybe, maybe people haven't seen it since then. And yeah, it was kind of a sillier movie than the previous ones especially considering it came right after it, the avengers which everybody lords as you know the or at least at the time lauded as the best thing ever before the likes of civil war and infinity war and everything came out uh winter soldier what have you but it is a it's kind of like putting ant-man and the wasp after <laughs> Infinity War. Oh, yeah. So it kind A slightly of, sillier movie. Very silly really. with the dragon breath and Yeah. <laughs> um but, but yeah, it's also Shane Black and that's kind of his aesthetic is to be a little bit silly. So I appreciated that it had his stamp on it and I've loved his other things that he's done, you know, Kiss Kiss Bang Bang and um, other things he's written, uh, The Nice Guys, and yeah, so it definitely had his stamp, the Christmas elements always in his movies. So yeah, yeah, there were some really fun things in this movie, like even just the start, you hear that ridiculous blue song and it takes place in New Year's, what, the 2000, 1999 to 2000 oh, yeah. New Year's. And yeah, you kind of get this whole incredible, <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. spurning it, of the villain early on. It is, it is, it is kind of very similar to the Incredibles. Yeah. Killian is syndrome, <laughs> essentially. Um, what I really liked about that whole nineteen ninety nine situation was uh, the hair of John Favreau. <laughs> oh yeah, his uh, really Pulp Fiction hair. Yeah. Very much. He, <laughs> he did look like Vincent Vega. Yeah. And I appreciated that. And you got to see um, Jensen. I don't Jensen, know if a lot of people noticed the, that. Because he did say when he first met Tony in the cave that, you know, we met at a conference in Bern. And then you see him meeting him at the conference in Bern. And he's yeah, kind of the so, guy who helped him and told him to not waste his second chance. So I, you know, I appreciate getting to see him again because he was a very special part of the first movie that's what the mcu has always done it's always made these little subtle callbacks that if you're paying attention to yeah. you'll really appreciate mm -hmm. i like um, that they took the time to do that to address that little moment and i love definitely. little details like that but also i feel like if you didn't pay attention to it and just sort of thought oh this is just a guy then it it's something you can Iron Man 3. rediscover it, on a rewatch. Yeah, and it doesn't affect it in any way. It's not like... It's not telling you you should have watched the previous yeah, movie. Yeah, it's just a little Easter egg in there for it's you. Just a little, it's just a little Easter egg that really, really works kind of nicely. So yeah, that whole sequence is fun. Yeah, so that whole it's setup to how he got here now with these people and what they're working on, all of that was set up, I think, really nicely. And they did added little fun things in there, like, you know, Happy's hair and... Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. But yeah, I do, I do agree. It's very Incredibles-like. Yeah, which... and then even having him tied to the <laughs> the thing, yeah. but, but all of that whole... <clears throat> the person it's that hard. is you think is on the side of Tony, but is kind of working with the bad guy, like all of that. <laughs> it's not a bad thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, what's her name? She's like... Uh, Rebecca Hall. 
Rebecca Hall. She's Mirage from The Incredibles. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, See, so yeah, it's kind of like that. There's nothing wrong with that because no. The Incredibles is great. But um, yeah, it's 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 strange. Killian as a as an actual villain is weird. Yeah. He's not my favorite. I'm not, not going to say it was executed well, but. He served his purpose, I guess. He he did, and yeah, it's the the like I said, the twist in general. I'm about yeah, I don't I'm about it now, which is just kind of weird. That like yeah, I was hanging my dislike of this movie on that, and now it like I, I'm kind of into it. But as soon and there's probably a a more real name as soon as. Guy Pierce turns into a dragon fire demon. That was so silly. Like, why? <laughs> I'm out. I'm. I'm just out at that point. Oh, I, that was so silly. It, and if he could do that, why didn't he do that so many other times? <laughs> like, it's the. It's. It's. It was just a little goofy, too a little far. Goofy. Killian would have been a better villain if he was just a businessman. Yeah. He just would have been if he was the businessman Mandarin rather than the businessman fire demon Mandarin. Yeah. Yeah, that was a little weird. Like, I don't even know why he needed to take the extremist thing that he was giving to these people. No. I've I've got no idea. His whole situation's weird. It's just the overall picture of him being the Mandarin and tricking everybody into believing that Ben Kingsley is that I do like. Yeah. But then, uh, then, then they kind of just it explained it away by him just exclaiming that he's the Mandarin. Yeah, which so, was a little silly. It was a little and silly, a little sloppy, but it fall. It, it doesn't fall apart at no. the end. The end is the weakest part. And like I said, I almost say this is my favorite Iron Man movie just because it's really fun compared to the others. It's a, it's a hell of a lot better than Iron Man 2, because Iron Man 2 rarely makes sense. The only real good thing in that is Sam Rockwell. <laughs> Justin um, Hammer. Justin Hammer dancing all <laughs> yes, the time. Yeah. Um, Iron Man 1 is a good movie. A very good, well-made movie. It's just not a movie I would want to watch over and over and over again, as far as superhero movies go. Uh, I would I would sooner watch this again because it made me laugh. Yeah, a lot. And the big final battle set piece. What did you think of that? Was it like it's too much easy. going on? There's I don't think there's too much going on. I think it's good. I th- think they give. Uh, well, they finally give Rhodey a bit to do with. Oh end. yeah, because he's kind of absent for a big chunk of this movie. Yeah, and he shouldn't be, but he is. Um, so I'm glad they gave I'm glad they give Rhodey a bit to do, even though some of what he does he's like, okay, can 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 he really do that? Yeah. Um, but we have to suspend our disbelief. This is a superhero movie, and that's what they're all about. Yes. Um, well, because yeah, they tried to give I, him a little moment of doing stuff as a guy, as a man, not in the suit, but it was a yeah. little extreme. saving President William Sadler. Yeah, without a suit. I feel like they needed to do that to show that he was, like, a capable, like, fighter in person. And, you know, because you see him, like, as, like, a military man, but you don't see him doing any really action outside of the suit. So I appreciated that they tried to give him something to do, but it was a little extreme. (laughs) Flipping off, Um, hanging um, drums of things. and Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I, I I do also like how he is basically turned into robot Captain America in this movie. Yeah, essentially, um, Iron Patriot. The Iron Patriot, which I I had never heard of that. I'm glad I never heard of that. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a little, weird. It's a little just, corny, just slightly. Corny. Just stay as War Machine. Yeah. It's fine. We 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 don't mind War Machine. War Machine's all all okay. Um, yeah. So I'm glad they give Rhodey a bit to do at the end, but uh, the actual overall set piece is is okay. It's just kind of ruined by fire demon guy Pierce. Yeah, and what, like um, the pepper stuff. What did you think? The pepper stuff's 
Pepper kicking ass in a sports yeah. bra. <laughs> Definitely. Pepper pe- look, everything about it is good apart from the main villain in that situation, which is a, is a bit of a problem, yeah. Mm. Um and is really the kind of reason why I'm not saying this is an excellent movie. Yeah. Because, of course, there's always going to be things. But um, did you like the house party protocol? The house party? What's the Remind me. All the suits. Oh, all the suits. Yes. I didn't know what it was called. Yeah, I did like all the suits. house party protocol. Schmoder. I, I loved the fact they used all the suits. I thought that was really All his uh, PTSD making in the middle of the night can't sleep suits. <laughs> Yo, I, I, re- I really did like all that because it is, again, it's Tony showing just how clever he is without being sort of overly, yeah, I did all this. I'm Tony Stark. Hello. But he only did those because he's just like freaking out and he has to protect Pepper. And so he's trying to just make a bunch of things to keep her safe and he can't think and he's freaking out. So that was where all those suits came from. So I like that in the end, he ended up just kind of destroying all of them because it's kind of a fresh start and moving on. But oh, oh, it's the a fresh way start. that he moves on is what I discovered annoyed me way more than the Mandarin situation. So you get a scene where at the end he decides, oh, okay, I can have this shrapnel removed and then I'm fine. Which leads no. me to think, why didn't he do this after the first movie? Like, why, why did he you... wait two movies? Why did he let himself poison himself to create some new element? Why was he going through all of this when he could have just had the shrapnel removed all along? Like, did it really take them from 2008 to 2013 to come up with this surgery? Like, is that what happened? <laughs> because... And it also takes away that whole element of the suit and the arc reactor being a part of him, which I really liked. Because, you know, Batman, he's just a guy in a suit. Iron Man is kind of the same thing. Tony Stark is a guy in a suit, but at least the suit is powered by him. And that whole kind of metaphorical thing they did in the first one with Pepper kind of comparing it to his heart. Like all of Mm -hmm. that made me love it even more that the suit was kind of a part of him. And now with the shrapnel removed, he doesn't really need the arc reactor. So now he's just a guy in a suit. I entirely agree. It is the stupidest thing that has happened to Iron Man's character in the whole universe. Yeah, like, why did they do Um, that? Like, he could have stayed with the shards in there and he had the arc reactor. But, yeah, like, why didn't he do this the whole time? Like, why all of a sudden, okay, now I'm going to get this shrapnel removed that's circling around my heart. Like, And, (laughs) as you mentioned, and as we mentioned in in our Iron Man 2 episode, the silly plotline of poisoning yeah with the palladium and... or whatever and having to find a new element which was resolved like halfway through the movie like what was the point of that if he could have just had this surgery like why yeah. that was so pointless so, as we as we as we found out as we know in iron man 2 the art reactor is actually Dist- killing Tony Stark, the thing that's keeping him alive is killing, killing him. him. Yeah. But none of this would have been a problem if the surgery <laughs> had been had two years before, exactly. three years before. So um, it just like totally just makes other things that happened confusing and more pointless. So that just really annoyed me more than I remember the Mandarin annoying me. Like, I don't even remember this bugging me as much until i watched it again i'm like oh yeah that's really kind of stupid <laughs> <laughs> so yeah did, did, the mandarin i actually no. got on board with but this just kind of annoyed me more than that ever did <laughs> i i really do honestly completely yeah, agree right. i'm not here saying that i am on three is an excellent movie. I'm not here saying it. I'm here saying it's a good movie. 
I'm here saying it might be my favourite solo Iron Man movie purely because of how much it made me laugh. Yeah, I think it's the funniest one. For um, sure. But it's got this stupid element that leaves it off on a really sort of confusing yeah. note. Yeah, and I don't think um, they really ever address it again in any other movies. No, because he just has So he the still suit has the suit and... with the arc reactor, but the arc reactor isn't really connected to him, but in oh no i'm thinking wrong uh but yeah like they don't really explain it he just has the suits now and the arc rector's a yeah. part of the suit and not a part of him which yeah, yeah. is just really disappointing because i liked that whole element yeah boo. it's it, <laughs> a big boo there boo. from janine <laughs> um but yeah like you said before the the art reactor actually being a part of tony made it way more personal made it made the stories you could tell as and they did in Iron Man One and yeah. Two, really. I mean, yeah, okay. The art reactor killing him, the thing that's keeping her. And alive that could have been him. really interesting too, but they it didn't go been. anywhere with that. They just it made it so it oh now executed. he needs a triangle in the front. That's the only thing that plot line did was change it from a circle to a triangle. <laughs> it seemed yeah. But that's a plot line that they couldn't do now. Yeah. But they could do that, and it just so happened that they executed it kind of badly. Yeah, and it was a waste of time. You had, like, a bunch of characters to introduce into, and you wasted that time with this plot point that went nowhere. And now this thing with the, the surgery just makes that even worse. <laughs> yeah. Um, that I mean, that's something as well about Iron Man 3. It doesn't introduce anyone, really. No. No one that's uh, gonna stick around. <laughs> no one, no one that's gonna stick around. There's no Nick Fury. There's no, no Black Widow. There's no way. There's, there's, no, there's no Black Widow. You get a little bit of uh, Bruce Banner in the post credits, but that's about you it. You do, and that's that's <laughs> that funny. Was funny. Let's talk about that now, actually, because <laughs> that is that has got to be one of the funniest. While it doesn't, you know. Um, like continue the story any further it was a fun little no. moment and he's yeah. like i'm it not fit. that kind of doctor <laughs> like what? and he's just falling asleep <sighs> it fits in with the whole humor of the movie yes yes um to have to have that post credit scene of, of tony treating bruce banner like a psychiatrist and yeah bruce just falling asleep and uh, missing the whole story that he was telling. So then, yeah, you find out that he was basically telling this whole story to Bruce. And, yeah, we got to take advantage of that. But Bruce missed the whole thing. <laughs> of course, the, the main quote of the this uh, first series in Morgan Hasn't Seen is uh, Edward Norton, better than Mark Ruffalo as Bruce as Banner. As Bruce Banner. <laughs> I, as Bruce Banner. Yes. Let's let's be very <laughs> clear on that again. Bruce Banner. Not as Hulk yes. as Bruce Banner. Yeah. But uh no, that's a very fun scene. Um but it's kind of it's a weird movie to talk about because when you actually think about it in the big picture, not a lot happens. No. It's a very of its own movie. It's a very I don't know what's the word. What's the word I'm trying to use? Stand alone, not standalone, but call it standalone. Because um, other than like the stuff that nothing. happened, which they easily reference from Avengers and him having this yeah. post-traumatic thing, it could be its own thing because, like you said, it doesn't really have any other MCU characters in there um, to other th drive that story. Other than actually just furthering Tony's arc, and like I said. Tony in this is perfect Great, for me. Yeah, I love Absolutely him. You know, him perfect. with Pepper, him being scared, him having those panic attacks, um, and him just really worried about keeping her safe because of everything he's seen. Um, all of that is really well done. He's very vulnerable, and I like seeing him. Because even just in the beginning of the cave, like, he was a little bit vulnerable, and then he was already, like, confident and cocky and, you know, right away. Yeah. Um, but this, like, he is obviously super traumatized and affected, and you get to see that and see him very vulnerable. And I think that's what makes him even more endearing. This is the first great performance Robert Downey Jr. gives in the MCU. Um, 
you could say what you want about Iron Man 1. I don't like Tony Stark in Iron Man 1. <laughs> this, he brings a level of emotion. Yeah. Um, that he hasn't shown before and has, of course, since shown in near enough everything that he's been in uh, since Iron Man 3, whether it's Civil War, whether it's Infinity War, the second Avengers even. He's a, he he's a, definitely brings uh, an emotion to that. Whether it's, you know, creating Ultron or whatever happens. Or, you know, feeling guilty with, with the Sokovia Accords and feeling guilty yeah. that, yeah, look at all this stuff. We think we're so cool, but we're actually, like, hurting people and killing people and causing Definitely. possibly more damage and all the conflict there. And yeah. e even in even in Spider-Man, even in Homecoming, when he's got the emotional father-son relationship yeah. with Peter. Um but the, yeah, like I said, this is really the turning point of Tony's character to more of a, a caring character, more of an emotional character, more of a character that actually has some struggles. Yes. Um, and Robert Downey Jr. brings the goods to that. And that's that's great. That's exactly what you want. That's kind of why he's the face of the whole thing. Yeah. Not even... only because he was the first movie, but yeah. And yeah, even with his relationship with Harley, the little kid, um, all yeah. of that was also kind of showed his caring side and his, you know, willingness to, like, <clears throat> open up to people. And I liked all yeah. that stuff with him and the kid. That was really nice and funny. Yeah, there were a lot of funny moments there, too. Definitely. I was just about to say that. Very funny moments. They had great chemistry between them, too, actually. Mm -hmm. um, it's a little precursor to his kind of relationship with peter yeah um even though of course peter's not like 10 or however old uh this kid in this was but uh but yeah you yeah. see him caring about people when happy gets hurt like he's telling the nurses oh he doesn't like this he likes that make sure you leave downton abbey on because it's his favorite show <laughs> like <laughs> like he knows about the people in his life and he, even though he acts very aloof like he's all about himself and he doesn't care like he really does care about the people in his life and he wants to keep them safe and he wants to avenge them and <laughs> yeah. was that was that an attempt <laughs> at a pun um no just no, no <laughs> what was it that obvious <laughs> yeah <laughs> it was bad well, I'm sorry, um, I'm sorry. No. Uh, but honestly i think if people who maybe are iffy about iron man 3 uh, give it a rewatch remember it, yeah maybe remember it as sort of this uh this movie that disappointed them or this movie that they thought was stupid and yeah sure there's a bit of stupidness at the end but if you're looking at if you look at this as purely Tony Stark uh, and the character arc of Tony Stark in the whole twenty two movie, however many there's been uh, story or however many movies Tony Stark's been in eight question mark question mark nine yeah. eight uh, eight, eight. Nine. I didn't I just want to bring nine. this up now. I didn't even think about that. Really? That's a little, in, all your that's a little inside. It's a little inside. Hashtag joke Collider knows Live. Any, yeah. Knows anything eight. about eight and nine? <laughs> but uh, I didn't even think about that, so that shows you where my brain is right now. Yeah. Um. But yeah, out of all, if you're watching the whole MCU as a, the story of Tony Stark, this is his. Uh, this is his turning point. This is such a key film in his character development and his character arc. Um, that was also watching for fun. that arc, arc, arc reactor. Arc reactor. Got well it. Done, oh yeah. Well I'm on done, today. Janine. I'm so <laughs> proud of you. Uh, Terrible. So um, bad. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think it's a great movie if you look at it as purely tony's some movie some great character stuff some great funny moments probably the funniest one the one where we get the most and uh best clear character stuff 
Um, mm. Yeah, I definitely yeah. say this is the one for that. It's just a shame that it goes to a slightly stupid place and that Guy P.S. turns into a dragon. <laughs> well, hey, uh, then you can just think of it as, as Game of Thrones since we didn't get to talk about can. Game of Thrones. Uh, there's your you dragon. Can. There's your dragon fire right there. There's your dragon, although he's not breathing. Dracarys. <laughs> Dracarys, Guy not... Pierce, Dracarys. <laughs> 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 Maybe although, he's Trogda! Uh, <laughs> Maybe he is... <laughs> Trogdor. <laughs> Maybe he's burninating the countryside. Yeah. Burninating the countryside. <laughs> um Maybe there's no dragons left in Game of Thrones by the time this oh episode gosh, comes out. Don't say that. Janine, who the hell knows? We don't at this point know what's gonna happen in the first episode of season eight of Game of Thrones. I know. Uh perhaps all the dragons die, perhaps. Okay. I literally don't know. I'm, We're going to look yes, stupid. Yes. <laughs> Just stop um, talking about this. I'm getting very sad. I can't help it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah, I don't think Guy Pierce is particularly good. No. It is not my favourite Guy Pierce role. Um, as far as the villains we've covered on this are, and we've now done, I mean, what, Obadiah Stain? So yeah, where um, would he rank on the Iron Man villains? Probably the, la whip, the least. Whiplash. <laughs> yeah. The Abomination. We want my bird. Uh, yeah. Who does want his bird? He does want his bird. <laughs> uh, who else is in Iron Man 2? Doesn't Iron Man 2 have two? Justin Could Hammer, he... I guess. He's not a villain, though, is he? No, he goes He's... to jail at the end. He was yeah, funding... Everybody Bang likes Sam Rockwell. He's sweet. I know. It's so um, ridiculous. What a Loki. Yeah. I guess. Of I mean, obviously Loki is the best. As you know, at this point in the whole universe. Um. Uh, what 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 else? Am I, I think I, am I forgetting one? I'm not forgetting one. Thanos. I'm not forgetting. <laughs> not Thanos. <laughs> <laughs> He's um, way better than Thanos. No, obviously, no. We haven't covered Thanos on Morgan, hasn't seen <laughs> yeah, no. Have we covered that? Was there yeah. a Thanos origin movie? Yes, you missed it. It was hidden amongst all of these movies. It was actually a short that was released just on the Blu ray. Yeah. Um, yeah, of Iron Man 2 was a Thanos short called. Farming with purple aliens. Oh, I missed that. I'll have to check it out. Um, actually, the best thing they've ever put out. Way better than Winter Soldier. <laughs> it wouldn't be an episode of Morgan Hasn't Seen if we didn't go off the rails a little no, bit. No, it wouldn't. It wouldn't. <laughs> to be honest, it wouldn't be an episode where I am speaking on this whole podcast feed, whether it is in its wonderful podcast or on Morgan Hasn't Seen, if it didn't go off the rails, I have a tendency to just ramble. And it takes us places. It might bring us back on track. Usually does bring us back on track. Yeah. But uh, well, as we could just as talk villain... about Game of Thrones again. I mean, Guy Pierce is with the woman who plays Melisandre. So, I mean... He... Is he really? He is. <laughs> That's madness. What together. a good piece of trivia. Yes. Um, well done, Guy Pierce. Yeah. Well done. Um, <laughs> but yeah, not my favourite Guy Pierce performance. I'm not... I, look, I don't think there's been any really great... Uh, Loki aside, none of the rest of the villains have been particularly great that we've covered. In these films that we've seen thus and, far. No. Well, well, Janine, I'm led to believe that in the next movie we're going to be covering... Um, and the last no. one of the MCU series, Thor: The Dark World. Yeah. I'm led to believe, Janine. Janine, I, I'm I'm led to believe. Now I don't know about you, but I'm led to believe that the villain is appalling. Yeah, Malekith. Mm -hmm. Played by the great Christopher, Christopher Eccleston. Eccleston. Yes, but mm, yeah, you get yeah. a naked Doctor Selvig. You get. Period blood. Oh, okay. As... Whoa. <laughs> okay. I think that's what one of the screen junkies guys called it. Um, the ether. 
Look, <laughs> I'm just hoping that Chris Hemsworth doesn't look as weird as he did in Thor. Yeah, no, I think they got his eyebrows under control. His super blonde dyed beard and his super blonde dyed eyebrows. Yeah, I think so, they. So, yeah. Yeah, they they established the look in the Avengers, mm. so you'll see. Yeah, they do. I mean, he doesn't he doesn't look like that in the Avengers, does he? It's just Thor one where he looks like a weird. <laughs> yes, and it's like it took me a minute, but you called it. Yeah, it's the super blonde eyebrows. Yeah. It is nobody, weird. no blonde person has eyebrows that color. Mm. They yeah. just don't. It's, mo most of them don't have eyebrows if they are that blonde. Blonde, yeah. It just looks so, weird. Stop being weird, Chris, please. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I'm. I'm sure. I'm sure. I like Chris Hemsworth. I always like Chris Hemsworth. Um. Oh yeah, he's great. Loki's in, presumably of... Loki's involved. And there's um, um. There are some good, uh, good little nuggets with Frigga and Loki. And the rest is kind of... Well. But who knows? Maybe this rewatch will make me find things I enjoy like this movie did. So I don't perhaps know. Perhaps it is. It's been and a perhaps, while. Perhaps my first uh, my first watching of Thor The Dark World. my The last MCU movie I need to watch. I will be fully caught up with all of them after Thor The Dark World. It, uh, many people might think it good that I'm watching this one last out of all, considering many people put it last out of them all yeah. in terms of quality. But uh And um yeah. I believe I don't think we've mentioned that in this series we are going to try to do bonus movies in our series yes, we is that we choose. So yes, our bonus are. movie for this will obviously be Avengers Endgame. So after yeah. we finish our last movie, Thor The Dark World, we will do one last one with this run of MCU movies talking about Avengers Endgame. Yeah, and those that are uh, have been paying attention, they will realize that uh, the episode on Thor The Dark World, which comes out next week, is coming out the week that end game comes out so doesn't that fit in nicely yeah. for the week after when we'll be talking about end game and don't worry full spoilers will be in that episode yes because it, it i'm not being funny if you're watching if you're listening to anything about avengers end game on the wednesday after, after it's come out spoilers are are fair game spoilers are fair game we will you know we're gonna say right at the start probably it's like just to be clear this yeah. is gonna be spoiler filled yes go and off we now will probably be teasing what our next um little run of movies will be that last episode definitely. right definitely yeah, will what will janine for force me to watch next no. what Will janine force me to watch next she's forced me to watch five movies in the mcu uh, so far and it wasn't that Shoot. bad right certainly wasn't uh although i haven't seen thor the dark world yet, <laughs> oh my so, gosh. so then you might uh, hey, maybe the hell so we'll see. but yeah we are going to be doing a little bonus on avengers endgame which will come out uh the week following the uh, weekend release and I'm sure it'll be a very emotional weekend, considering I believe that's also the Battle of Winterfell. So we will all be here to give you all a nice, big, warm hug. So come listen I will to probably, us. <laughs> I will probably spend the entire episode not talking about the Avengers <laughs> and just, just talking about Game of Thrones. Okay, <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's fair enough. I think that's completely fair enough. But Janine, as we begin to wrap another episode of Morgan Hasn't Seen Up, is there anything else you want to say about Iron Man 3 that we haven't already said? To be honest, I don't think there's a great deal left yeah. to say about it. Um, I liked this movie. I found some things enjoyable that I didn't the first time around, or even the second time around, and... Yeah, definitely worth a rewatch to kind of see how you feel about things that maybe you didn't like before. So that was really fun. And yeah, other than that, I think we've covered pretty much the main highlights and disappointments. Yeah. 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 And it's weird because of the five we've done so far, 
I'm still putting this one second behind The Incredible Hulk. Wow. Okay. As far as I'm okay. concerned. Followed by the first Iron Man. Followed by Thor. <laughs> okay. Followed by Iron Man 2. And I'm, I'm pretty sure to that assume, order's going to stay the same. Yeah. Likely to assume that the Dark World is just going to go right smack bang at the bottom of that. But who knows? I was supposed to not really like The Incredible Hulk and ended up loving it. I was supposed to not really like Iron Man 3 and ended up liking it. So. Anything who knows? can happen. Anything can happen. And maybe I will hate Avengers Endgame, although I absolutely don't think that's going to happen at all uh, just as long as Steve Rogers dies I'll be happy <laughs> um, and yes I said that right he is my favourite but, but he you need some die. steaks need some steaks it's a problem that has riddled the MCU for quite a while the lack of steaks yeah. and um, please show me them if they don't show me good amount I don't want one death I want at least four major. Yeah, because this it, is a big deal. So if nobody dies and everybody deal. returns and you Twilight yeah, Saga this. <laughs> but yeah, it was just a dream and everyone's fine. No. It's not going to sit. It's not going to sit well <laughs> with me. It's going to be the complete opposite of what Game yeah. of Thrones does, Janine. Yes. It's going to be the complete opposite of what Game of Thrones does. So They'll if everyone survives, right. then we'll just talk about Game of Thrones and all the people who died there. Oh, definitely. <laughs> okay, definitely. that's the plan. If, Backup plan. If, if everyone survives in Avengers Endgame, we're not doing that bonus episode. We'll just talk, talk about, about the first few episodes of Game, Game of Thrones, Thrones instead. Deaths. Yes. And we'll be sorted. Uh, <laughs> Janine, thank you again for forcing me to watch another MCU movie. Thank My you again pleasure. for joining, uh, joining us on the It's a Wonderful Podcast feed for another episode of Morgan hasn't seen. Have we got an official logo yet by the time this comes out? Um, Who knows? We might. I'm working uh, we, on it. We, we, we might very well have. Uh, as we all know, Janine is a wonderful designer and she is coming up with a logo from us that you might already be able to see on that. But apart from designing a logo for this show, Janine, what are you doing? Um... A couple of things. I have a tea shop on Tee Public at G9 Design. I will be selling and displaying art at uh, Malton Fest in May the 10th, 11th, and 12th at the Egyptian Theater in Los Angeles. And working on just some other little things on the side. So catch me all those places uh janine debine on twitter and instagram i have a patreon at janine lc and yeah you can see me on the schmodown as janine the machine <laughs> you certainly can and guys you can see me on this very podcast feed on the other show I do, with Nolan Dean. It's a wonderful podcast. We are over 50 episodes now. How mental is that? Um, go and listen to our 50th episode special where we uh, do a bit of a fun top five list of the movies we had covered in the first 50 or the first 49 episodes. Um, and do a little bit of a Q and A. It was a fun episode, and uh, but we are back on just the regular movie episodes um, right now. Um, thank you everybody that's supported over there. Thank you everybody that's supporting this show, and whatever things end up on this uh, feed in the future, whatever things, uh, whatever Janine forces me to watch. For this show in the future as well. I'm sure she'll come up with something. And maybe I will like it. Maybe, maybe the next series of movies we do. Whatever that turns whatever that you know turns out to, to be. Maybe I'll absolutely hate it. And we'll just end up you in won't. arguments you all the time. You know you'll love it. I would never steer you wrong, Morgan. Never. Mm, I don't trust that. <laughs> 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 that was very evil <laughs> guys you can find uh, me on the social medias on twitter at the purple don with a three instead of the e in the because three is the magic number on instagram at just the purple don with no three because instagram likes me and twitter doesn't 
Uh, you can find the podcast uh, feed, Twitter, at It's A Wonderful One, where you will get new updates of this show, as well as the main show, It's A Wonderful Podcast, with uh, Nolan Dean and myself. Janine, where can everybody find you again? Uh, Janine Demine on Twitter and Instagram. And thank you again for listening to another episode of Morgan Hasn't Seen. Join us next week for Thor The Dark World to cap off our hasn't seen version of the MCU with the week after being that bonus special episode. Talking about Endgame. It's going to be an emotional week. I just keep thinking about the Battle of Winterfell. I'm still... <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, it's going to be I'm in rough. a very, very Game of Thrones mood right now. Yeah. Screw the MCU. <laughs> Screw it. <laughs> very Game of Thrones mood right now. Until next time, guys. Bye. Bye.